Well, it took me about four months, but I finally got around to modding my Cadison Conquest homage by replacing the hands. While the original design is nice, the hands can be hard to see depending on the lighting. Not to mention they lack loom, which the dial has. Now, this is not a full tutorial, as I've only done this a couple of times, and there are already some good tutorials out there on YouTube by people who are much more qualified. Plus, I can't seem to keep either my head or hands out from blocking the shot. So in the future, I'll have to buy or jury rig a special mount to do this kind of work. But I will go over the process, and the first step is to always remove the case back, which unfortunately here is a snap-on case back. Now as a side note, if you have a lot of snap-on case backs to deal with, I highly recommend this tool I got off Amazon. It's basically a mini pry bar that you can stick underneath the lip and use with the side of the case or the lugs. It gives you a bit more leverage, so it usually only takes me one or two tries to pop off a case. I just recommend using some plastic or tape to cover that flat edge to keep it from scratching the case. After that, I use the point of some fine tweezers to press down on the button, which will release the crown and stem. After which, the movement, dial, and holder should just fall out. And in order to reduce the amount of smudges and fingerprints that can get on the dial or the inside of the case, I'd recommend wearing some gloves. Now after my original review, I spent about a month deciding on which hands to put on this, and where to get them from. And thanks to a comment, I thought I would try some cathedral-style hands, thinking that it might look like the mythical Hamilton Mirth watch. So I wound up ordering a set of these off an eBay seller named Raffles Time, which had them in both stainless and black. And I thought the black hands on a black dial wouldn't really offer much contrast, so I ordered the stainless version. Or at least I thought I did. Now these did ship from overseas, and they did take about a month to get to me. But once they did arrive, I decided to check my order just to make sure before putting them on. And I discovered I accidentally ordered the wrong ones. These were actually for a Seiko movement, not a Miyota. So I now have an extra set of hands for another project. And for whatever reason, the seller doesn't have any silver cathedral hands for a Miyota, only has silver for the Seikos. And since I didn't want to use the black hands, I decided to go with a plan B, which are these skeletonized aviator style hands. Now, I wasn't sure about the second hand's beige lollipop, but I was hoping the larger white skeletonized part would look good on that black dial. Now, removing the hands is rather easy. They really are just held on by friction. And many people just use tweezers to do it. But I was using a tool I got off Amazon to make it a little easier. Once they were off, I then adjusted the watch to midnight, which you can tell by the date wheel advancing, and then started to put the new hands. You just line them up and gently place them on with a little bit of force, and that's really it. You just need to make sure that the hour and minute hands are both lined up to 12. Once that was done, I just checked and adjusted each to make sure that the hands didn't interfere with each other before trying to put on the second hand. Now the second hand doesn't need to be lined up, but it does require some very steady hands and a lot of patience. Once you try to do this for yourself, you'll know what I mean. It's a very small pin that goes in a very small hole. And I lost track of how many attempts it took me. But to put it this way, it took me 15 minutes to take off the old hands and put on the hour and minute. But took me another 10 minutes by itself just to get the second hand on. Now if you ever get frustrated, just take a break and relax. This is not something you really want to force. And after you eventually get it on, you want to double check everything to make sure that the hands don't interfere with each other. And if they look like they will, just a little bit of bending up and down to get them out of the way. And after that, it's pretty much ready to go back in its case. Now what I'm not showing is that I actually take the movement out a few more times before finishing this project. I kept finding more and more dust sitting on either the crystal or the dial. But all in all, it really took me about 30 minutes to go from start to finish, where I originally started with this and wound up with this. 
Now, I'm still not sure about that beige lollipop. But it does depend on what strap I put this on. But I will say that I love the look of the hands, especially with that black base. It almost makes the white skeletonized part look like it's floating. And as for the loom, well, there's some good and bad with that. The good news is that it seems to perfectly match the dial. The bad news is that it also perfectly matches the dial, and specifically in longevity and intensity. So whenever I do this again, I'll probably look for some hands that say they have Super Luminova. Overall, I'm quite happy with the way this turned out. It was a great learning experience, and in the end, I took an inexpensive watch, and I made it a little better, and a little more unique. And if you're interested in trying something like this, I'd say give it a shot. The tools you need are rather basic, and all the skills you can learn here on YouTube. The main thing is just having a steady hand and a whole lot of patience. Now I still have those cathedral hands that I ordered by mistake, and I'm thinking of a project with them and that Invicta Pro Diver I got pretty cheap. But if I do that, it's going to be a bit more extensive, and I'll probably do that later in the year. But in the meantime, let me know what you think about this Caddison upgrade. Did I make the right choice, or would you have gone a different route? And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you on the next one.